Welcome back to the Nerve Report. We have a great show lined up for you this week. PlayStation aims to change the world of esports. Xbox exclusives might be further away than we originally thought. And with the closure of Stadia Games and Entertainment, we ask the question, could we see Xbox and PlayStation games come to Stadia? All of this and so much more on this week's episode of the Nerf Report. Are you listening? Welcome back to the Nerf Report, my name is Bryant, and what a crazy week it has been for gamers. Resident Evil dropped a ton of news surrounding Resident Evil Village, Horizon Zero Dawn's Aloy joined Fortnite, and Nintendo announced a brand new version of the Switch Lite, which is blue? Or is it purple? I swear, this is like that striped dress all over again. But quite possibly one of the biggest stories to come out of this week is from the world of PlayStation. A story that involves a brand new patent that Sony hopes will change the way that we view game tournaments and esports. However, in order to cover this story correctly, we need to dust off our passports and dive into a very old segment that we like to call the world of eh, sports. Finish him. Esports. You know, I've got to say, with the growing popularity in esports, parents and non-gamers alike are starting to become more curious about video games. I mean, I gotta level with you. If I was a parent and I found out that other kids were earning six figure playing Fortnite and mine wasn't, I'd have a ton of questions. So let me get this straight. You're failing in school because you're playing too many video games? Yeah, um, look at him. I'm kind of in the zone right now. Now, son, I'm just looking out for ya. You know, grades aren't everything. You can make a living playing off video games. In fact, you, you know this kid named uh, Ninja? All right, so we are having this conversation. Look, I'm just saying, your mother and I read the most fantastic Facebook post, and I'll totally share it with you, but this Ninja fella, he, he makes about six figures playing video games. How crazy is that? Well, this week, brand new patents filed by PlayStation were discovered, in which the company is hoping to change the way that we watch yeah, sports. According to the patents in question, Sony is wanting to make the viewing experience around esports tournaments as best as possible, especially for new viewers. You see, Sony noticed that for first time viewers, esports tournaments are really hard to understand. So Sony has patented the ability for viewers to be able to switch between different viewpoints or different players. And quite frankly, I mean, this patent also opens itself for being a excellent learning tool for new gamers. Imagine yourself trying to get better at Call of Duty or League of Legends. This feature would allow the audience to watch specific roles, players, or classes, and be able to pick apart how they play and improve your overall gameplay. And it's gonna be extremely interesting to see if Sony pursues this patent, especially with esports joining the 2024 Paris Olympic Games, which would be the perfect event to show off this brand new technology. Technology. And from the world of PlayStation, let's go to the world of Xbox, who late last year announced a massive lineup of games coming to the platform. However, according to brand new reports, those games might be further off than we originally thought. According to Christopher Dring of GameIndustry.biz, we are going to have to wait quite a while for the upcoming Xbox exclusives. Everwild, Perfect Dark, and Fable. On the most recent episode of VGC's Off the Record, Christopher stated, I've had a few conversations with friends at Xbox Game Studios, and those games they announced, Everwild, Perfect Dark, Fable, are so far away. As in, they might even be in a new Xbox by the time these games come out. They are so far away. In fact, Christopher went on to explain that the rumors surrounding Xbox trying to sign Hideo Kojima to contracts totally make sense because, well, for the time being, Xbox doesn't really have a big lineup of exclusives ready to go. And I guess I find this all really interesting because one, Xbox has spent a crap ton of money on exclusive content. 
I mean, they have the entire lineup of Bethesda, so obviously there has to be some type of exclusives from that side of the company. And then the next two major exclusives that I can think of are like Halo Infinite coming this fall and Hellblade 2, hopefully launching in the spring of 2022. And I guess the second thing that really comes to mind is I have a hard time believing that Xbox would have a mid-generation update with everything going on, especially with xCloud. xCloud allows players to play any of the next-gen games on their phones, tablets, PCs, or even televisions. And when you look at the current generation and Xbox having a hard time shipping consoles due to a chip shortage, I guess I'm just dumbfounded at the idea of Xbox thinking about the next console. I, I, just, I just don't see it. And finally for this week's show, let's talk about Google Stadia. As recently, Daphne Parrott, the chief marketing officer of the cloud gaming company Blacknut, wrote an article on VentureBeat defending Stadia's decision of closing Stadia Games and Entertainment, which is extremely interesting because the argument that Daphne uses is that by Stadia no longer focusing on exclusives and being a competitor against PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, or PC, Stadia can now focus its time and resources on bringing third-party games to the platform. And that is obviously a very controversial statement because the age-old argument that I hear constantly in the comment section is no platform has ever existed or become successful without having a lineup of exclusive titles. But as Daphne goes on to explain, gaming is currently a quadopoly and the market shared by Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and PC is already fragmented enough. So for Stadia to try and compete against that is kind of foolish. However, thanks to cloud gaming removing the necessity of hardware, services like Stadia could really start to make a brand new market in which ease of use and accessibility are valued more than exclusives. And Daphne does go on to point out that if you look at the most successful games of the past couple years, they are designed to allow owners of different gaming platforms to play together seamlessly. In short, they are designed to be played by as many people as possible and depend on the scale of player numbers to generate revenues. I mean, you've got games like Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone, even Genshin Impact. All of these games not only feature crossplay, but they're also free to play. Solving both the answer of accessibility and affordability. And then when you combine all of that with cloud gaming, it's kind of like just a match made in heaven. So with Stadia no longer focusing millions of dollars into exclusives, they can now offer themselves as an accessible platform with an extremely low bar of entry that developers can add their games to that will potentially open them up to a much larger audience. Which raises the question, could we see Xbox and PlayStation games running on Google Stadia? And when you look at the direction that Google Stadia is headed in, specifically based on the last couple months, I mean, Stadia is really focused on ensuring that the games arrive day and date with other consoles and making themselves as appealing as possible to new players. Quite frankly, Stadia saw the success they received with Cyberpunk 2077, in which at the time, they were a valid alternative to other platforms. So with games like Little Nightmares 2, Outriders, or even Resident Evil Village launching day and date, Stadia has made a great effort to not only give gamers a reason to buy the games on this platform, but the company is also making a massive effort to expand the player base to lure in new developers. For example, in the case of Resident Evil Village, Capcom recently dropped the resolution and frame rates for each platform, and Google Stadia offers a similar experience to playing the game on the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. And seeing that those consoles are still extremely hard to find, players still using a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One X could easily experience that same next-gen gaming experience by playing on Google Stadia. Plus, to sweeten the deal, if you buy Resident Evil Village on Stadia, they will send you a Stadia Premiere Edition which allows you to stream games in 4K to your television just like your PlayStation 5 and your Xbox does. And this is the part that becomes extremely interesting because we are still in the era where players who want to play video games on TVs have to buy secondary hardware. But very soon, 
Stadia will become pre-installed on all smart TVs, meaning that if a game like Fortnite or Warzone were to arrive on Stadia, anyone with a smart TV could play this game instantly. That is a massive value add to developers. People could play your game without needing to buy a $500 console. By Stadia being pre-installed on your television, that lowers the bar of entry to, well, do you got a TV? Great, you can play our games. And if Stadia continues down this route and continues to paint the picture that they are a valid alternative, an alternative that allows you to play on whatever device you want, Personally, I think the service can thrive. Plus, if Stadia is no longer seen as a direct competitor to PlayStation or Xbox, as Daphne mentioned, could we one day see PlayStation Now or Xbox Game Pass come to Stadia just like Ubisoft Plus did? I mean, both platforms have already begun to launch exclusive games on competing platforms. PlayStation literally launched MLB The Show on Xbox this week. So could we see Xbox or PlayStation games appear on Stadia? I am fascinated to hear your thoughts on this one. So please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of the Nerf Report. Thank you again so much for watching and a special thank you to all of the Nerf Report best friends who make content just like this possible. Until next time, my name is Brian Chappelle and this well, this is a little show that we call The Nerf Report. Hey, thanks again for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw and you want to see more content just like it, which who wouldn't, uh, hit the subscribe button right there. And while you're down there, hit the like button. Maybe even consider becoming a Nerf Report best friend, just like the people listed down below did. In fact, don't you want to see your name there? I know I do. <laughs>